Hi everyone! Today in this video I'm going to talk about this wonderful, beautiful wine Honeysuckle Major Wheeler, which is growing in my garden already for three years. And look how vigorous and happy he is. He looks so vigorous that I think I'm going to trim him and train him back to go where he belongs, up here. He kind of escaped down and look what he created, all sorts of these long trailing branches. So this video is about Honeysuckle Major Wheeler and the arbor, which I built myself. And uh, some of you were inquiring to give uh, you a closer look at this arbor. So honeysuckle, major wheeler, belong to a family, a very big family of honeysuckles. There are approximately 180 varieties of honeysuckles and they grow almost in every state of America. Here in Connecticut, we have very, sometimes very humid summers and this honeysuckle, just take it in stride. No diseases, nothing, no mildew. It goes through the heat of summer, it goes through the humidity of summer with no problems. Honeysuckle Major Wheeler, good in zones from 4 to 11. We are zone 7, coastal Connecticut, and just in case you don't know. Oh, <laughs> who is this? <laughs> This honeysuckle I planted uh, three years ago as a little baby. I ordered it online. I did my good research because I wanted something carefree here. I wanted something which I will plant and I will forget it. And this proved just to be a right place and for a right spot. This place gets a lot of sun here. Sun rises there from our garden, over our garden. And this honeysuckle basks in the sun all day. And the good thing is, look at the root system here. You see how it found itself uh, around uh, our, our wooden structure here? That area always gets very dry because, you know, it's under a thick canopy of honeysuckle. And plus, it's uh, neighboring our holly bush, which is also kind of gets a lot of energy and water out of the soil. So that root system the root system of this honeysuckle struggles for water and it is not even showing any sign of drought stress because honeysuckle this particular one is very drought tolerant so i don't have any problems with it whatsoever if i have water i will water it if i don't water uh, it uh, it just lives through drought periods all right now, as for the flowers of honeysuckle, these are probably the best feature of this bush. Of course, we want uh, our wines for beautiful flowers. Look at these flowers. They are in the shape of um, trumpets laying down, going down, and uh, uh, they look orangey, reddish color inside, look more orangey inside. And they are very uh, happy bloomers. They start blooming somewhere in June. This is not the most, uh, uh, not the strongest blooms right now. Now. And now we have the beginning of August and this honeysuckle finished blossoming this biggest blossom of the year and now it's just slightly coming back and repeating blossoms again. But as you can see this guy is slightly overgrowing its territory and we have here a very happy neighbors and honeysuckle. I have to make sure that this neighbor relationship is staying very healthy because honeysuckle always wants to jump on our holly. And by the way, you see, I, I just gave our holly a nice haircut. So it looks very nice. Honeysuckle can be very fast growing. As you can see, this wine is only three years old. And it came to me in a little pot like this, little guy. And in three years, look how far it grew. It was uh, at the beginning of spring, it was probably like this, half this size. And now all this happened during this summer. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to train these guys back onto this foundation right here and I will let all this rest here. Also I will trim whatever doesn't look very well and uh, all this laying down also will be trimmed and uh, I will generally shape it in a nice way. You see 
how uh, this area he gets a little bit twiggy i don't want that to happen also i don't want my holly to become bare here because uh, this uh, this uh, honeysuckle is shading area here so i don't want my holly to get a bare spot i consider this holly to be a very nice big nice fellow and i don't want him to get any uh, imperfections here because of uh, honeysuckle shading all the sun from it as for the arbor Several of you inquired for me to have a closer look on my videos at this arbor. So here we are. I'm showing you what I did. Uh, in our property we had some uh, little, little trees to take out. And instead of throwing those trees away or burning them in the fireplace, I saved those uh, heavier branches and I made this arbor myself. I uh, dug the holes in the ground, maybe this deep. I filled it up with them with cement and uh, I put these sticks there. So hopefully they are here already for three years. Yes, I did this three years ago and planted the honeysuckle here. And they are quite sturdy. You can see that bark is peeling off, but hey, that's okay as long as the wood is sturdy and it's not rotting. I see that there are little mushrooms showing up there already on the wood. But hey, how, how long can this arbor serve? Look at this stick. I had to uh, fix it because, ooh, bugs love it here because uh, it fell down it became old and plus honeysuckle it's quite heavy so i suspect that i have to do some heavy pruning here to keep this baby in check but look how wonderful it looks with beautiful flowers it's a nice presence here instead of just having this corner bare why not to have this beautiful thing here and this will go up and it will look very nice once all the leaves will get established and turn again into the sunny side it will look very nice here Honeysuckle, by the way, is the plant of the year for 2010 because of its disease resistance, mildew resistance, drought tolerance, and just generally carefree and happy um, nature of growing. The only thing I have against it is that it's getting to be big too fast. So I think I need to keep it in check by uh, strong pruning, by more aggressive pruning that I like. I just like it to, be, to prune a little bit. But here it looks like I would need to clear some branches and uh, keep this guy in check and make sure that he's not jumping on its uh, less aggressive neighbors. As for the design of this area, come and look at this. I have this idea in mind. This area is like an entrance area to this uh, little corner of our garden here, a little room I like to call. And on both sides I planted little boxwoods. And I will eventually, this is one year, no not one year old boxwood, it was in the nursery for two years, 18 months. And then they sent it to me and here it is in the ground for one, uh, for one half a year. So eventually I want to plant to train this little baby box one in a little ball here, spherical ball. This boxwood is fairly fast growing for some boxwood. It's called green velvet. And hopefully it will grow quicker next year because it will be in the ground for overwintering and it will turn into a nice ball in several years. I will make sure I will trim it that way. So this area, you see, boxwood on this side, boxwood ball on this side, and then we have two boxwoods on this side. It will look a nice entrance and uh, exit area to go into another room and this area would be well defined. Oh gosh, this is so intertwined by this time. Okay, whatever. I hope I'm not going to break it. My husband tells me don't fall off the ladder. I'm fine, darling. Let me see if this will be, it will look at the beginning, it will look a little bit patchy because all the leaves would be upside down. But then, once the wine finds its bearings, it will be fine here. Huh? Oh, what I'm tying with? I have this, uh, I will show you in a second. I have this elastic, believe it or not. It's a green one. You don't see it very well. So I loosely tie my uh, 
plants with it. I use it on roses too. And believe it or not, it lasts for many years. I don't have to re, um, um, re establish it again. I don't want, uh, so when, if you decide to use elastic in your garden, don't do it too tight. I do it loosely, especially when I deal with plants. And because this color is green, nobody can see it in your garden. Yes, my husband says if the plants grow, they can stretch a little bit, so there is a give to it. So this is what I'm using. Okay, now this guy will go here and the rest I probably will trim. Oh gosh, this is taking... All right, this is a nice long wine. And it's not attached to anything else, so... It will go here too. I will train it to go around. Okay. And eventually these leaves and these branches will find their way. You see all this area here? I have to clean it out. Because this area was very shady. That's why it created all this uh, yellow, yellow leaves. All right, now, where's my clippers? All right, here. You know what, this branch, I will cut it out because I don't want it to be so low. I want people, you know what, we are tall people and to walk here, I want to be able to walk here with no, uh, no things hanging down my hair. All right, and honeysuckle will be fine. It's a hardy wine, it's not going to be, uh, suffering too much all right this is twiggy here this will go away oh this can be here here you go you see nice green little thing this too can go around here look how nice it looks here beautiful all right so this is it I finished uh, trimming all the dead twigs and whatnot, and I think this looks much better. So, honeysuckle major wheeler, re-established again on the arbor, and uh, in a day or two, all the leaves will turn around, and it will look better than now. But I think it looks good. Happy gardening, and I will see you next time.